Are you a California licensed lawyer currently in the process of finalizing your law corporation registration? In today's video, I am going to talk to you about the final documents one must submit to the state bar in order to finalize the law corporation. Hi, my name is Andrew. I'm the managing attorney here at Molai Law, where we help entrepreneurs just like you start your businesses without having to deal with the complicated legal forms. Our done for you service is backed by over 2,850 plus five star Google reviews, and we can help you start your business too. The purpose of these videos are to provide you with as much guidance and clarity in the beginning stages of starting a business. So if you haven't already, please make sure you hit the like, subscribe, as well as a bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. It's always recommended to speak with a professional prior to doing anything. And so with that side note out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the final steps one must take in order to finalize their law corporation in California. In addition to filing the Professional Corporation Articles of Incorporation with the Secretary of State, a lawyer practicing law in California must take additional steps. In addition to applying for an EIN number, in addition to opening a U.S. business bank account for the law corporation, a California licensed lawyer looking to register a law corporation must also submit the proper paperwork with the state bar. Let's go ahead and talk about those required documents that one must submit to the state bar. One of the first forms that a lawyer must submit to the state bar is proof and evidence of the Articles of Incorporation. The Articles of Incorporation is a document that is quite easy to find. Typically, once the entire registration is finalized and confirmed with the Secretary of State, they will typically mail it out. However, if you're having some sort of issue trying to find the Articles of Incorporation from the Secretary of State, what an individual can do is they can go onto the California Secretary of State business search. They can search their company name and under their company name, they should be able to find a copy of the Articles of Incorporation. The Articles of Incorporation must include the date of the actual registration and confirmation from the Secretary of State, as well as some sort of filing ID number in order to identify the filing. This can be found at the upper right hand corner of the form. Next, a lawyer is going to want to draft the necessary bylaws. Now, if you're not too familiar, the bylaws of a law corporation must contain specific language that is compliant with specific code. The good news is the state bar provides a link where you're able to review the exact language that must be included in the bylaws. Basically, what this language entails is specific restrictions on share ownership. As you know from the previous videos, only licensed lawyers can hold ownership in a law corporation. Additionally, a lawyer will need to draft stock certificates. In the stock certificates, the stock certificate should include the lawyer's name, the signature, as well as the amount of shares that's contained in the corporation. Additionally, there's another form that the lawyer must submit and the form that I'm talking about must include all lawyers who will be engaging in the practice of law under the law corporation. So this includes all employees as well as potential independent contractors. But do keep in mind, this form only requires lawyers to be listed. What I mean by this is one would not have to list their secretary or their paralegal, or even their assistant. The lawyer must also submit a form that guarantees certain claims. The amount for the guarantee of claims must be compliant with the code. And then lastly, the final document that a lawyer must submit is the declaration that declares that the lawyer will abide by rule 1-400. All of these documents that I mentioned in today's video must be sent to the state bar. In other words, all of these forms must be submitted in some sort of package and then sent specifically to the correct address of the state bar. And this final step of submitting these forms to the state bar does require a payment and a fee. Once a package and forms are mailed to the state bar, 
the lawyer must then wait uh, to receive a certificate from the state bar. Once the package is sent to the state bar, the lawyer must then wait for the certificate from the state bar prior to actually administering any sort of legal services. In order to stay compliant, make sure you mark it and display your name under the company name that you use when registering the professional corporation with the Secretary of State. Then you're going to want to ensure that the certificate from the state bar remains in good standing. And then of course, you're going to want to be mindful of any sort of maintenance fees that the state bar may require. The annual maintenance fees required by the state bar are different from the franchise tax board fees that the California Franchise Tax Board requires. So do keep that in mind. If the lawyer happens to change any sort of details regarding the law corporation, they're going to want to make sure that the Secretary of State is fully up to date as well as the state bar. These are the two authorities that a lawyer is going to want to ensure that they're fully compliant with. If you happen to have any questions about anything that I talked about in today's video, make sure you click the link in the description box below to book your free call with a professional who can help you better understand how you can compliantly start your own law corporation. If you happen to enjoy this video, please make sure you hit the like, subscribe, as well as the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. It's time to invest in yourself. It's time to rise. If you would like to continue learning more about LLCs, businesses, online businesses, go ahead and watch one of these videos.